Okay. So today I'm going to do a partial mastectomy, or some places would call this a very large lumpectomy, but here they call them partial mastectomies. Um, so what we have is basically a lump of fat that's been oriented with four silver metallic tabs, cranial, caudal, lateral, and medial. Um, so if I know that this is a right breast, that would make this anterior and make this posterior. So being spatial aware, understanding three dimensions, um, you got to know um, which one's which. So first thing we'll do is we'll weigh it, which I've already done. It's 45.8 grams, and then I'm going to measure it. But I'm not going to just measure it in three dimensions. I'm going to measure it with known uh, uh, orientations. So um, cranial to caudal or superior to inferior, whichever way you're going to call it, 4.9. Medial to lateral, 5.7. Anterior to posterior, 3.4. Okay, so with me holding the camera, you take your partial mastectomy over to the beautiful Faxatron. Open the door. Pull out the grid, place the specimen in the middle of the grid. Now according to where we put it, it looks like we can put it on three and get it, but let's do it on two because it makes it better. So what this thing does is this self calibrates the magnification based on the size of the specimen. So you can see there is a laser cross grid going right through it. Close the door and we hit go and it'll do its business now i've already put in all the patient demographics in the computer that's actually an old case there that's not the image we're looking at so this takes a couple minutes this is its last exposure and then it starts the process See a little, little thinking hourglass, and there's our specimen. Okay, so we have looks like a salvi scalp radar reflector and a two mark eye shaped clip sitting there next to this spiculated mass right in the middle of the specimen. So I'll do that first before ever cutting the specimen to get a good idea of what I've got and then we'll go back and do our inking so we can do our cutting. Okay so we're ready to start doing our inking now. So I always ink in the same way I always do and I go anterior, posterior, superior, inferior, medial, lateral. So I'll do that now and I orient it the way it is on me. Uh, our color code is, you know, our color code. So I do anterior yellow, posterior orange, superior black, inferior green, medial blue, and lateral red. And I'll just do that now while you're watching. One tip for inking um, specimens, I always like to ink opposites. So I just did the anterior or superficial now I'll flip it over and I'll do the posterior. Um, by doing this, you won't end up with hardly any area. Um, basically, it's symmetrical. So basically, the anterior is the same size as the posterior, which is um, superior is the same size as the inferior. And so that's just how I like to do it. That way I don't end up with hardly, you know, not enough medial or lateral or anything else. One thing too, do not remove 
the, the orientations, either you're using stitches or you're using these little metal things, do not remove them until after you've inked. I know you think you've got it, you can remove them and make room for your ink. Don't ever do that. That's a disaster waiting to happen. Okay, and with our specimen completely inked, we rinse it in vinegar or dye fixing solution, whichever you have. And then I blot it dry. This will help the ink from running as we cut to give our margins a little bit more stick to them. And there we have it, our completely inked specimen. Everywhere is inked. Okay, so with our specimen completely inked, now you can remove these tabs or stitches. Sometimes with the stitches, I'll just leave the stitches, but if you leave these metal tabs and your blade hits it, obviously it'll dull your blade and you don't want that. So just get them out of the way. We've already inked it based on what the tabs told us they were supposed to be. Okay, so this is a right breast. This is anterior, this is posterior, superior, inferior, lateral, medial. I always section right to left. So because this is a right breast, I'll go lateral to medial. If this was a left breast, I would go medial to lateral. I always go in this direction. Um, it's very systematic. Okay, so then I just take my um, big knife and just start slicing. And get yourself a paper towel and wet it. If you wet the paper towel, then your breast tissue won't stick to it so bad. And so, just make your slices and try to keep your slices, they don't have to be super thin, that's a uh, that's a misunderstanding. A lot of people try to get them super thin and they end up falling apart on them. You want to get them as thin as you're comfortable with so that they stay together. But more importantly, you want them to be consistent. You don't want to cut some slices super thick and some slices super thin. Because a lot of what you're going to be doing in this, this case is going to be based on uh, the number of slices that we have. Oh, we found the clip. So I'll go ahead and remove it now just because I have to get in there. These two mark clips are a beast. So you can see that clip right there. It's pretty, pretty big. So my blade is almost trashed, but I'm going to try and make it through this specimen. So you can see that's where we pulled our clip out of and that's the mass. There's the mass. There's a little bit more of it in this slice, too. And we found the, um, the radar reflector here, too. So there's their radar reflector. And so, I don't know if you can see this, but I've laid my specimen out systematically. So everything is oriented the same way. Um, I'll eventually end up flipping some of these so I can see more of the mass um, on the other side. But uh, for the most part, we want to do it like this. And so, then we'll take it and then we'll, we went lateral to medial. And then I'll number the slices on the paper towel makes it easy when you're doing your sections and your notes and everything. So I did 11 slices. 
So I'll write that down, lateral to medial, 11 slices. And so we have mass in five, six, seven, and there's a little bit in eight. Let me just pick this up so you guys can see this. Okay, I wanted to just show you the, um, the breast tumor there. This is an invasive ductal carcinoma, intermediate grade. Um, you can see it is very stellate looking. Um, and we have all of our margins. So I'm about to, si to say the size of the mass and how far it is from all the margins. So one, I've cut this five, 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 five. So that's two and a little bit in four possibly. So I'm going to go 2.3 by 1.8 by 1.5 stellate. It's in slices 5 through 8. Now we'll do our margins. The mass is mostly here, possibly mostly here. I think I'll go with this. This is the biggest part of the mass right here. So anterior, 1.0. Posterior, 0 0.9. Inferior, 0 0.8. Superior, 1.6. Now, my lateral and medial are the ends. So we have tumor there, we have no tumor there, no tumor there. So I'm going to say it's 16 millimeters, 1.6 cm from the medial. And then we have, let's go, 1.9 from the lateral based on the number of slices and the thickness of the slices. Now, the fun part, we'll actually scan this again with the Faxatron, and we've already found the clips, but we're going to look at the mass, how the mass looks after we've turned the specimen 90 degrees, which is basically what we've done with our slices. Okay, so I got my, my grid back over here, and I'll just grab the slices with the tumor that I can see. I'm just going to lay them down from top to bottom. Now, there's really no purpose for me to do this. I've already grabbed my biopsy clip and my salvi scalp out by basically cutting them with a knife, but I'm doing this for, for you guys so you guys can see how I'll do this. So basically I just put the slices five through eight that had the tumor. And so you can see I'm outside the grid of 1.5. So I'm going to use the 1.5 grid, which is this shelf in the Factotron. And as long as everything's within that 1.5 grid, it'll, uh, it'll work. All right, doors closed, we're ready to go. And so there's our original scan, and it's working on the current scan. Okay, so there we go. Obviously, the stellate tumor that we saw grossly is the same stellate tumor we see with the Faxatron. Now, if we saw, um, if, we, if we were looking for a clip, this would be where we'd find the clip and pull it out without uh, mutilating the specimen too bad. But you can see this thing is very stellate with a lot of these fibrous fingers extending all the way to the inked margins. And so, that is going to be why I am going to submit this entire specimen. I know it's a bit much, but that's the way I'm going to do this. Because with the biopsy, there was invasive ductal carcinoma, but then there was also DCIS. So we're looking for DCIS at the margin. So I would have to submit all of this tumor 
corresponding slice, corresponding slice, that would only leave these three and these two not submitted, and I'd have to do all these margins. It's just easier for me to submit all of it. Okay, so I'm ready to start submitting my specimen. So there's two ways you can go about it. Some places, they want you to start with the tumor. And if that was going to do it that way, I would start with five and march my way down to eight. Then I would do corresponding of five with four, and then I do corresponding to eight, and that would be nine. Um, I'm going to do this entire thing. So I'm just basically going to start on the lateral side and just submit everything. They already know which slices have the tumor. They already know which slices had the, the, the biopsy clip in it. They know which slice had the salvia in it. So I'm just going to march my way all the way down. So that's it. We ended on uh, 75 cassettes. Now, let me say this. This is an academic institution. This is ridiculous to do this much on a, on a partial mastectomy. Now, if you're in a private practice, you're going to do 15 blocks, maybe, um, and get basically the same results. But this is how we do it here, and I'm just demonstrating how we do it. Mainly, I wanted to show the factotron. I'll do the dictation now. Mm -hmm. 